In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this hoist for lifting and storing the hard top of my Jeep in one day for dirt cheap. This is the Jeep in question. It's a two-door JK Rubicon. It's a lot of fun to cruise around with the roof off, but the actual process of taking the roof off can be a hassle. Even with two people, it's so big, awkward, and heavy that sometimes it's not even worth doing. I looked into buying a hoist and was blown away by how much you have to pay and how little you actually get. A lot of these setups run hundreds of dollars and look exactly like something you could piece together at Home Depot. And you still have to install it yourself. So I figured, if I have to build it myself anyways, why don't I just save $300 and build it myself? If you're watching this video, I assume you came to the same conclusion. So I took a trip to Home Depot, and here's what I came home with. This is a four-pack of ratchet straps. At 500 pounds each, these are more than beefy enough to lift the 150 pound hardtop. I made sure to get ones with rubberized hooks that wouldn't scratch or damage the top. I also got six beefy eye hooks. I don't know what the weight limit is on these, but again, it's a lot more than 150 pounds. This is a large-ish shackle. You can substitute this with any strong metal loop. Carabiner, D-ring, whatever. These are 2x4s. I don't think I need to explain these. Lastly, I picked up this 1,000 pound rope hoist. You can substitute this with anything that winches. Come along, chain hoist, trailer winch, electric winch, it will all work with this design. This rope hoist is probably the cheapest option at 20 Canadian dollars. All in all, my material spend was $80 Canadian, which right now is about $60 US, which is the number I'm going to put in the title because it makes it sound cheaper. I started out by backing the Jeep into the garage where I wanted the hoist to go. I wanted to mount it in this empty area of ceiling, but I didn't want it too close to my workbench. I then used high precision tactics to locate the rafters in the ceiling and mark them out. Then I mounted my 2x4s into the rafters that were closest to the front and rear edges of the top. This isn't strictly necessary, you could install this hoist directly into your rafters if you wanted to. I just did this because it's easier to work with wood you can see than wood that's hidden under drywall. You also don't have to mount these parallel to your rafters like I did. I just did it this way because I wanted them running perpendicular to the vehicle, which is the same way the rafters run. I got lucky and my rafter spacing is 24 inches, which is very close to the length of the hardtop at about 50 inches. So the 2x4s lined up with each end of the hardtop. I then decided where my lift points would be. On the front, there's really only one place where you can hook in without risk of it sliding out, and it's right here at the bottom corner. In the rear, I thought about lifting from the window frame, but ultimately decided that if I'm lifting the front from the bottom, it would be easier to lift the back from the bottom too, and settled on the rear corner. With those locations figured out, I dropped a hook down to each one like a plumb bob, and used that to mark the spot directly above on the 2x4. Then I went through and installed an eye hook at each marking, so I'd have one above each lift point. I was able to hang my body weight from these eye hooks, and if they support my big fat ass, they'll support anything. So now that you've got all four eye hooks mounted to the ceiling, you could actually call this job done if you wanted to. All you have to do is hang a ratchet strap from each of the four eye hooks, hook them on the hard top, and then you just ratchet each corner to lift the top off. However, I don't want to ratchet each corner separately. I want to be able to lift the whole top off in one go, so I'm not going to stop here. I measured out and found the midpoint between the two rear eye hooks and installed a fifth eye hook.
I then took my four toe straps and ran each one through the central eye hook and one of the four corner eye hooks. So I had all the hook ends in one place and the tails at separate corners. I then took the shackle and connected all four hooks together. So the purpose of the shackle is to unite all the toe straps so I only have one thing to pull on instead of four, but it has the added advantage of acting as a stop. So if I pull down on one of the straps, it can only drop so far. So let's say something slips out of your hand, your hardtop's not hitting the ground. Next, I installed the ratchets on all four straps so that there would be a hook at each corner. This also has the added benefit of allowing me to adjust the length of each strap individually by adjusting the position of the ratchet. I was naive enough to think that I'd be able to just yank on all four straps at once and lift the top off using only my atrophied muscles. This didn't work, and in retrospect, maybe I should have paid more attention in grade 12 physics. All these straps make the top easier for one person to lift, but they don't make it lighter. It's still 150 pounds, plus all the friction in the system, which is quite a bit because I was too cheap to buy pulleys. What I needed was a force multiplier, which is where our rope hoist comes in. I installed an eye hook in a rafter several feet away to serve as an anchor, and connected the shackle to the anchor with my hoist. The rope hoist uses a series of pulleys to multiply the force of the pull. It does this either by physics or magic or something. I don't know. Either way, it means that instead of having to pull downwards with 150 pounds of force, I only needed to pull down with a fraction of that. This worked a lot better. The nice thing about the rope hoist is that it makes it very easy to let the top down slowly, and I don't have to stand near it, so I can stand over by the top and make sure that everything is lined up properly. At this point, the whole system was pretty much done. Essentially, it's just an elaborate way of hooking one single hoist to all four corners of the hardtop. All that was left to do at this point was a few finishing touches. I went through and cut the excess off of each ratchet strap, and taped up what remained so it didn't dangle freely. I also added a hook to the shelving unit that serves as my workbench, which I could use to either tuck the rope out of the way, or tie it off depending on if the hoist is in use or not. I then cut the excess off the rope, because I'm never going to use this hoist for any application besides this one. Now it's done. Here's a demo of how the finished product works. I start by backing the Jeep into the garage, and park it under the hoist using the hooks as guides. I then lift each corner slightly and slip the hook underneath. Next, I pull the hoist rope to lift the top off the Jeep. Then I tie the rope off on the hook I added to my workbench. This knot is called a mooring hitch. It holds the load fine and is very easy to release. If I'm just taking the top off for a few hours, I'm comfortable leaving it tied up like that, but if I'm planning on leaving it up there for a really long time, I can bypass the hoist with a ratchet strap, which has virtually no chance of accidentally letting the top down.
Once the top is off, the Jeep is free to go and can be driven out from underneath. On a 10 foot ceiling, the top sits high enough out of the way that I'm not really sacrificing any shop space. I can walk around underneath it, but I do still need to mind my head. I usually use this space for parking my bike, which still works totally fine. There's even enough space to park the Jeep underneath both forwards and backwards. When it's time to put the roof back on, I reverse the Jeep underneath the top. It's very easy to line everything up because the vehicle doesn't have a roof. Once everything is lined up, I release the rope and slowly lower the top, guiding it into place as I go. From here, it's just a matter of removing the hooks and the Jeep is good to go. Obviously, I don't want all this stuff dangling in my face when the lift isn't in use, so I can just pull the hooks as high as they go and then tuck them up onto their eye hooks, and then it's completely out of the way. And that's about it. As I mentioned before, this cost about $80 Canadian and took only a few hours to complete. The difficulty level is quite low. If you know how to find a stud, you can probably handle this. That's all for this time. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe, and if you end up building this, let me know how it goes in the comments. Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.